It's a little bit late, but I was just talking to some people in the exhibition because they were just on their way out. It's a great turnout. Thank you very much indeed. Um, first thing I'd just like to mention is that the meeting is being filmed. Okay? So if anybody has any objections to being filmed, I would uh, recommend you either sit that way or voice your opinion. Just let you know, I've, I've tuned it in so it's only showing the like the panel, so there should be nobody else visible on it apart from the panel. Okay. Right. So, um, why is it being filmed? Uh, I, I, it's not. It's not an official parish council meeting. No, no, it's not. I've had a, a number of quite a few requests across the village that can't make the meeting this evening because there's, well, we know well over a thousand people in the village and four hundred chances, and they're very interested in what's going to be said, so they have asked whether it can be filmed. Um, so they can make an effort, in my opinion. Well, they, some can't, they just got, you know, like I do work in London, they just have other commitments, so that's, um, so that's the, the reason. Alright, so, um, as a parish council, we've been writing to the highways agency at many, on many occasions, and have been uh, expressing views that have been passed on to us as members of the parish council as the A14 working group. And we thought that as the original <coughs> highways agency uh, schedule of the road being constructed, the next stage in their process was to put a um, planning, a development consent order to the planning inspectorate, following which you as interested parties could register your interest and make a comment to the highways agency at that time. That was supposed to be around October, but I think it slipped, and there's no indication yet from highways as to when that item will be open. So we thought we'd put on the exhibition with the plans that uh, Jacobs promised us at a time when the consultation period was open. Those plans didn't come during the consultation period. You saw on um, the opposite wall to this one, what they sent us, which was um, a lot of numbers, a lot of graphs, and kindly, the uh, plans, those figures were uh, extrapolated, and the cross sections of the road were then put up along the drawings, which have got some very small printing. And what we saw was where it says on the, for instance, on the road, there'll be a two meter bund, Bunding appears to be about 1.5, 1.6 metres above the road height, which isn't tall enough to block out any lorries. Um, we weren't certain what highways would take notice of, because they've said their consultation period was closed. The route isn't actually finalised yet. Um, that will be finalised and put forward to the planning inspectorate. Um, as parish council, we would be letting you know, individually, we'll drop another flyer around the village, when that um, period is open, encouraging people to register as interested parties and to be able to write in with comments and views. We wanted to call this meeting just to keep people aware of what was going on and see what your views as villagers were about what you've seen. Okay. So, we've had lots of comments during the week from people. It's been very well attended. Thank you very much for coming down. Um, would anybody like to open up with any comments? Ken. Yeah, well, I'd just like to uh, say thanks for the drawings next door and the photographs that have been, uh, been done because it, it does sort of bring it home quite well. Um, you, you, you just said that they haven't finalised the route yet. Mm -hmm. It's quite interesting, the other day there was a load of diggers up in the road. So yes. I, uh, I stopped off and I said, well, you know, what are you doing? And they said, well, we're, we're just doing an archaeological um, survey. And I said, well, why are you doing that now? And they said, well, th this is the route. And these are the guys that are working there. Yes. And I said, well, that hasn't been finalised yet. Oh, but it will be. And, you know, you think, mm. God, mm. is this... You know, are we being railroaded? Well, and you know, I'm sure everybody else here feels the same, including yourself. But it, it does cast a mucky shadow across things, doesn't it? If they if they've already started um, doing things in advance. Yes. So I'm wondering 
if it's perhaps something that um, the parish council should bring well, something off to them and, and ask them if uh, that's the case. Yes, what I, what I forgot to mention was uh, we had invited Highways along this evening. We got a um, reply from Highways saying, um, and I'll read it out to you, I'm aware you're holding your own exhibition in Hilton Village Hall over the next few days on the proposals for the new A14 in order to raise awareness amongst villagers of the potential impact of the new road. This local exhibition will culminate in an open meeting. You know that. Um, as you know, the Highways Agency undertook a public consultation on our proposals earlier in the year, and since then we've been busy working through all the 1,400 comments received and considering how these comments can be addressed. We have ha also been busy undertaking traffic anal analysis, the environmental assessment for the scheme, and are now working on the environmental statement, which will set out our mitigation proposals. This document will form part of our submission to the Planning Inspectorate later this year. Once we have made our submission, the Planning Inspectorate will seek views on our proposals and you will have the opportunity to make any representations you wish to them. We are very interested in hearing the conclusions of your open meeting on Tuesday and would like the opportunity to come to talk with you and a few of your parish councillors. We want to listen to your concerns so that where possible we can try and address the issues that are, you raise ahead of submission. Of our submission being there. So, Graham's kind of taking some notes. Yep. So, comments, please. We will put them to the highways when they. Just, just to emphasise what Ken is saying, it's plain that A, the archaeologists have permission to go on the land, and they've also been doing a similar dig in, um, in, in the low road, mm -hmm. um, which infers that the farmer's already sold his land for that purpose. Um, not necessarily. Well, true. the land is is not necessarily theirs. Well, um, who, well I was speaking to a farmer this week, or a farmer was telling us, and they received one week's notice of the people coming to do the work on their land. That's, okay. That's what we're told. There was just one other thing I was going to say there, Peter. Um, they also use Gravely Way as a route. For bringing the diggers into the yes, village, so you've got a seven and a half ton weight limit, and you've got a huge articulated lorry with two diggers on coming along Gravy Way. Mm. So it's yeah, narrowing of the road. We've got well, the registration. So we've got the registration number as well. So. <laughs> so we'll put that in the letter to highways. Okay. Because they might as well know. Because one of the fears, of course, is when the construction starts, is where all the traffic yeah. is going to go. Yeah. Um, because according to the site, there is a proposed construction site up near where the road will go over to take us to St Ives. The bridge will go over. So, there we go. any other comments? Many, like many of us have already completed the questionnaire that we're asked for, <laughs> and also written comments. Have those been distilled by the Highways Authority and then fed back to you to show what the common theme is from us? Will they be? Don't they? Good question. I've not had a response to my questionnaire or any comments I've put in on a personal basis. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, has, have many people had responses from the Highway no, 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 no. To a direct letter or yes. to a questionnaire? Both. 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 Yeah. Well, no. I suppose it was a letter really. Yeah. 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 So we'll ask them because there was, um, we wrote, had an article printed in Hunt's Post last week mm. um, referring to this exhibition. And then there was a comment put in by Highways, I assume, saying that they were um, addressing eight, 900 comments and that they would be taking those into consideration. But we haven't had direct feedback from Highways to say, these are the number of uh, responses we have in Hilton, this, these are the general theme of the comments. So the 900 would be for the whole? The whole route, yes. Yeah. What we want to see, of course, is the ones relating to Hilton and the local areas. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So we'll, we'll ask them that as well. I think that's a good point to ask. What they, what sort of response level they had from Hilton, mm -hmm. what the themes were, mm -hmm. and what action they've taken to respond to those in consideration mm -hmm. to the overall scheme. Okay. Peter, we're struggling to hear out Sorry. Oh, then. So the question there, was have we had a direct response from Highways Agency on the questions raised by residents of Hilton? Um, and we haven't. So what we're going to ask the Highways Agency is out of all the comments that they're responding to, what sort of level of response they had from Hilton, 
and what sort of themes there were from those responses, and what actions they proposed to take within the scheme to address those particular issues for Hilton. Yeah? I think that's quite a good point, just so we can get, get engaged from high rates of how many people, what they are actually addressing that have been raised in the village, because we had the guys from Highways come to the meeting in the Methodist Chapel and tell us that Hilton was one of the losers in the scheme. The, the letter um, I got back from them was a, a very typical boilerplate. It looks like they'd read the letter, pulled out three specific sentences, added a boilerplate to it, so it's sort of personalised. But then having read the hat response, uh, almost most of what was in the hat response was the same as my letter. So. Yeah, they're taking, yeah. pulling out a few so points. Dear Andy. That's it. One, yeah. no, a bit more than that. They pulled out some. <laughs> I was talking about things like sound, sound, um, reflective materials and those sorts of things. And then they just added in the, the generic stuff. So, which is of course better than we had when correspondence was addressed to Hilton Parish Council, Derbyshire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I expect they got a big shock in Derbyshire when they yeah. discovered the A14 being built by them. It's a good idea. Peter, there's, there's something really troubling me here. Just. Um, I'm, I'm sure I've read somewhere that the Oilways Agency have said that they've already reacted to a number of the things that... That was in the paper. Yeah. I'm, oh, well, that's, so why are they reacting to something again that is not been passed yet? Yes. And, I, you know, it, the, the more I hear about this, the more, I, you know... I really do think we're getting striped up here. And I mean, it's going to affect... I mean, just looking at your picture next door of, of, of how close those trucks are to Gravely Way, it's going to affect everybody along the, the top end of the village mm. in a terrible way. Yeah. And I, I really do think we've got to really get together and knuckle down and, and everybody in this village fight this, because if we don't, it's going to be too bloody late, and we're going to have trucks up their backsides nearly. Yeah. Well, again, that's um, this in the scheme of the process, or the process of the scheme, it was supposed to be um, yeah. being opened up in October. We wait to see. Mm -hmm. uh, but we will, as soon as we find out the date that the um, window is open to register as an interested party, we'll drop a flyer to everybody in the village. We'll be making, uh, obviously, as we've been told before, we can't put a generic letter out and everybody just lift that and use that to send. We'll put up some bullet points <coughs> to say these are areas that you might wish to address in your letter, like funding, traffic through the village during construction, um, noise pollution, air pollution, what planting there might be on the scheme, because planting from what we've read is down here somewhere at the moment almost now on the basis of whatever money's left, if there is any, will address some of the mitigation issues. I think... Do you, do you feel it's too late to challenge why the rules has been changed from the original to the now? No. <laughs> yes, priority. Um, yeah? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think the people, you know, I think we can forget any prospect. If they've decided that's a route, that is the route. Yes. And so whatever energies we have to expand should be expended on mitigation. Mm. Yeah. You know, and anything else is a waste of time. Right. Okay. And, and I also Absolutely. think that um, it's, a, you know, it's a great shame that we didn't get into bed with them earlier. But the, the people in the offerings find out what their experience was when they went to judicial review and all the rest of it. Find out, what you know, let's see what we can learn yeah. from their I think experience. At the time they were doing that, certainly a representative of the village was going to the office meetings and was feeding back to um, the group that was in place at that time. Um, and I think it was a bit touch and go, wasn't it, at the yeah. end as to whether, and they pulled out just about the time it was going into court. Yeah. Unfortunately, the, the office got their legals back, yeah. otherwise it would have been um, a costly exercise. Yeah. But it, it, and what did it do? It stopped the route at that point, mm -hmm. and then they had to come out and reconsult mm -hmm. with the same route. And then it just got was going to go to planning when we had the election, and the scheme was shelved to be dusted off now um, and put before us again. 
whether or not there's any changes to that. I don't think so. I don't know exactly. I, I think there was. I, I think it's. I think we should talk to them. I think some concessions. Yeah. Were made. Yeah. I think that that um, and as far as I'm aware, the offers and Buckton are still looking at some processes, and a member of the working group is in touch <coughs> with that group to see whether they're if they became a substantially you know a substantiated legal challenge that could be followed. Then we will come to the village. I think Brampton as well. I'll, I'll come back and explain that in a moment. All right, then. I think Sorry. Brampton as well. Yeah. Isn't the same? Yes. Yeah, Brampton. Is it Brampton, Buckton, and Offords? Well, Buckton. Yeah, Brampton and the Offords. And the Offords, yeah. Brampton and the Offords. And the Bottoms and things, but they're going past there, they're going to be higher than the ones that are here. I don't know. Do you have to mention we don't have the inf that information. We don't have that information. Because they think that they're going to be a bit noisier than us. They might get a higher hill. They're going to be worse off because they've got the bridge, haven't they? Yeah, they've got a flyover on them. A concrete flyover. By the offers. Yeah. People are focusing there. Their main focus is on air and noise pollution. Yes. And that's their main focus at the moment. Which actually may well be an issue here. Yes. I recall... I recall the last, um, the last time the A14 was getting close to, we had a guy, a sound engineer came along and said that there wasn't too much point in doing readings in Hilton because it was outside the acoustic shadow, that was right, wasn't it? He had little blue circles of high things. Um, and um, there was an acoustic survey done after yeah, that. Yeah, um, the report's really interesting because the recommendations he gives says that they can give significant improvement to sound deadening here. Buns are useless, as we know, however high they are. I think they've even admitted that the buns are only there for visual screening. But there is very good technology even then to put in sound de deadening uh, barriers like they use in the continent and in Ireland, which yeah. actually would give us here in the village protection. And he's given the extrapolations of the amount of sound. Yeah. So if anything, push for expensive stuff, which of course uh, they know it's going to be. But it, you know, it's provable through that expert who you know is yeah. well qualified that that will give us some mitigation of sound. So don't take just a higher bund as a no, a but sop. but the um, the light the light pollution of the road would be reduced by bund. With the emissions as well, that's been reduced by having a higher bond. It does, it acts a bit like a corridor. Again, there has been some research in that, is that if you have the, the, the barriers, the bund or whatever it is, higher there, then you end up with a, a unfortunately, a bit like a tunnel, a barrier uh, of, of pollution, air pollution that stays within that. Um, and, you, and therefore there are some benefits from having those sorts of barriers. But yeah. I guess then it would escape where the bund isn't. And yes. when you come along the A14 yeah. to yeah. the park bund, um, just before the Collington bit and just after Hilton, the bund moves from this, the south side of the road to the north side of the road. And there is no bund in that stretch along there. And the bit that's on what effectively would be the Fen Stanton side is um, reported to be about uh, 0.32 of a metre, which is about a foot. So from bunding that is about here, it goes down to there. So I'm not sure what the pe good people of Fenstanton would feel about that because then they would have the light pollution from that road which is at least 2 metres in places 2.82 metres higher than the existing A14. The expert on the noise issue also said that there is very effective uh, road surfacing which is extremely expensive, which obviously, will not, as he said, you're not going to get that, but there is very expensive and very effective road surfacing. Not wanting to defend the highways agency, um, at the last consultation, they said that they would be employing the best you know, road noise reduction surfacing available. It was something that they learned at the last consultation. We'll see. Can I comment on that? I'll, I'll yeah. be taken in by that. Because whilst they can install it at the start, yes. and it is extremely expensive, and they've had some failures with it, there's no guarantees that they'll replace it. Mm. And the wearing course only lasts for 10 years. They had, they had it on Pots and Road, it didn't work. No. Did you get that bit about the noise reduction surface? No. So, um, when highways came to the 
um, they're in here. Uh, they promised that one of the things under the new scheme would be that they'd be using the best noise reduction surface that there is. We haven't seen the final plan, so we don't know whether that's true. What Chris has just said is that once it's on, that's no guarantee that it would be replaced when it runs out, or wears out, I should say, and it's got a life expectancy of about 10 years. They didn't have their usual caddy at all within available resources. Not at all. <laughs> I think planting is within available resources. Can I ask if you have any plans to collaborate with the other villages in refreshing the internet? An environmental survey was done of the order of, I can't remember how many years ago now. It was characterised by the fact that in at least one part of it, the sensors in Hilton failed. So there were no figures for Hilton. That's handy. Uh, Sorry. I wonder if it would be appropriate to collaborate with the other villages to establish a baseline as we are now in case we want to try and hold anyone's feet to the fire in the future. And I'm not sure. Have we been contacting the other villages on that point at the moment? No, but Bram Brampton, um, Brampton are challenging the, uh, the... They believe that it, what's proposed will exceed the, uh, the legal limit. Yes. So I, I believe so, they will be challenged. I think what we need to do is to establish where we are now. Yeah, Graham's got that point, Will. Then. They keep on telling us they haven't done the survey. <coughs> they haven't got that information. A... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we will. <coughs> we'll have a word. I remember last, um, many, many years ago when we came out, we contacted various of the parish councils around. Uh, yes. I was on the action group at that point. And of course, we had some response from some parish councils, but other parishes <coughs> which might be seen to have a benefit from the new road, where the route is. Yeah, yeah. That's understood. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Doesn't the local council have a duty to sorry? Doesn't the local council have a duty to uh, protect the environment in terms of air pollution for us? As in Cambridgeshire County Council or Huntingdon? Yeah, Huntingdon. Huntingdon. But they don't measure it. They only measure it in Port Manchester. Have we written to them, asking them to do it in Hilton? Well, I have personally, but I've got yeah. very plan. But that's again something we can bring up yeah. when the um, thing becomes open for comment. We can put that in comments to the planning inspector and, and perhaps have examples of this is the comment we've received. We believe this may be flawed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, a couple of members of the group had a meeting with Mr. Ginobili, and um, <coughs> he wrote to Cambridgeshire County Council regarding weight restriction on the B 104A. Okay, because one of the comments that um, came up in that discussion was to talk about uh, getting a 24-hour ban on HGVs through the village, which he was um, receptive to, I believe, and thought that was a reasonable case for mitigation for Hilton. And Cambridge and County Council wrote back to Mr. Ginobili and said, can everybody hear? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your letter regarding the concerns of Hilton Parish Council reference the proposed route of the revised A14. Whilst I fully appreciate the concerns that have been expressed by the Parish Council, at this stage the proposed A14 scheme is still very much in development and therefore subject to change fairly regularly. This was in July. Nevertheless, I should ensure that concerns are fed into the design process and considered accordingly. Given the state of change that the pro that the project is in, we are, unfortunately, not able to assess the need for a weight restriction on the B1040 through Hilton. This is not to say the B1040 would not warrant a weight restriction in the future. Rather, at the present time, it is not possible to make an informed decision either way. The current draft proposal suggests that the new A14 will be routed to the north of Hilton and not have a junction that joins the B1040. 
Should this option remain in place, it would likely alleviate some of the concerns that the Hilton Parish Council have regarding rat running. I would, however, like to reassure you that we are working closely with the Highways Agency to ensure that the views of all parishes on the route are taken into consideration and any potential impact is minimised. And this is a traffic manager at Cambridgeshire County Council. But I think, um, certainly from the comments I've heard this week, a bit about the rat running, it certainly wouldn't alleviate the concerns regarding rat running because um, the route, if you came from that way down through the village and up, down <coughs> the way and up to the new junction on the um, south of God Manchester is a mile shorter than the official route. So that's an area we will be focusing in on and writing and asking for them to give some consideration to what steps they can do to try and mitigate that. So Mr. John Rodley, um wrote back to us after he had received that and said he's received his reply and as you'll see Mr. Lumley advises the County Council are not in a position to assess the need for weight restriction on the B1040 at the current time as there is insufficient detail in relation to the proposals for the new A14. However, he has advised that he will ensure the Parish Council's concerns are fed into the design process. I will, of course, continue to monitor the situation, and when further information is available about the design of the new A14, I'll approach the County Council again about introducing an HG video. And we will, of course, um, also approach the County Council once those <coughs> designs are available. Do we have a detailed program of the amount of vehicles that are going through this village from 7 o'clock in the morning to 11, I'm talking about Arctic now, no, or vehicles o'clock. over 7 and a half tons? Well, I did, I, I, I did a, uh, I checked every single lorry during that time, uh, about 18 months, two years ago now. And at that point, we had 575 HGVs, that's seven and a half tons and above, through the village in one day. And that was a relatively quieter day too. Um, on days when the A14 is blocked, you can, you can say we almost double that. Well, one understands that, you know, well, I sit in my front room and from seven, from quarter to seven in the morning, they're going through. Mm. There are vehicles going through at six o'clock in the morning. Mm. Yeah. Right. Arctic. And it's about time we had the police or somebody checking these people that are coming through before seven o'clock anyway. Okay. Mick Georges are going through. Hansen are coming through at one minute past seven. They must be sitting outside the village just waiting for seven o'clock and they come through. Mm. And then there is a continual stream of them. And I just didn't know whether from 7 o'clock in the morning until <coughs> midday we had several days of checking of how many vehicles are going through. Not recently, I don't think, is the answer No, but no. I mean, as hat, we are planning to do another one. And in fact, I'm going to get up at uh, 3 o'clock tomorrow morning because mm. somebody has told me that every Wednesday morning, quarter past three, there's a lorry going through. Yeah, there is. And it's waking them up. So I shall be outside tomorrow morning with the camera and I'll take a photograph of whoever it is and I'll pass it on to the police as I do with everything else I get. <coughs> but the biggest problem that um, we've got as well is the number of vehicles that are coming along Gravely Way, HGVs coming along Gravely Way, it's increased beyond. Uh, you know, you can, you can see them coming past the house constantly. And they're obviously not um, using the route to get access to the village. You know, there's the, the foreign lorries coming down there, and you know, it, it, it is it is getting a big problem, and it's going to get even worse because you know they can say that there's no uh, junction at the A14. It's not lorries going to the A14 that it's a problem with. This is vehicles cutting through to get up to St Ives and, and, and go wherever yeah. that they've mm. got to go. Because the majority of them were the Milk Marketing Board, which is now gone. We now have Hansons, Marshalls, um, Mick, George. Mick George, and they're all using it as a as a route through to their other 
gravel pits, so, etc. Yeah. The other thing I was going to say was bigger in that same survey that they did in 2010. The result um, at the end was that during nighttime levels, this village is actually twice the accepted EU limit of noise after a certain time. That's with the road in its present location. Yes. With it being so much closer, it's going to be frightening the noise levels mm. of, of you know, anybody, anybody that lives on the north end of the village is going to be, you know, if it was twice what it should be then, it's going to be a lot more than that. The wind, was in, the wind was in the north yesterday, and I was in my back garden, and you could hear the eight wheel things mm. coming as though it was yes. just the other side of the hedge. Mm. Yes. And now, if it's another mile and a half closer this way, then it's even going to be worse. Yeah. At least we've got the chance with the prevailing wind taking it that way. Yeah, some of it. But sadly we have no control over the wind. No, we don't. <laughs> Yes, Yesterday I, I spoke across the hedge to Steve Bridge and I said, Steve, can you hear that? He says, tell, tell me about it. He says it's just non-stop mm -hmm. yesterday. Two hands here. Do you know how to have that? You're just scratching it. <laughs> you, you referred to the official route. Now, official route implies mm -hmm. some degree of enforcement. Uh, what enforcement do they plan to keep people to take that official route, if any? I don't think there is any. Oh, why call said, it an official route? Then? Suggested official route. That's the route that they... Suggested route. Yeah. They, that's the route they're trying to say that people would take. You all have that at some point before. And if you've got to set on the shortest journey, <coughs> that, that makes it that part. I think we've got a, a bit of a problem getting anybody to accept about the noise and the emissions and the lights. If, according to what's in the Hunt's Post, we don't conform as a country to the EU regulations. So um, perhaps if we, perhaps we should be demanding that this road does meet the EU regulations, perhaps that could be a legal challenge if in fact it doesn't. And maybe that's where where a legal challenge could actually come, come from. from. Yeah. And is that what they're, you're saying, they're challenging at Brampton and Buckton? I don't know if they're going, is there anyone here from Brampton? Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're going to challenge it legally. When talking to them, I got the impression they were worn out from last time, yeah. mentally. Um, but, uh, mm. that's, that's the sort of thing, in my opinion, we should be taking to inspectorate as yeah. or interested parties. Because if, if we put those policies to the inspectorate, there's some hard data. The gentleman over there was saying that he has some um, data on uh, noise levels, for example. Yeah. Yeah. If we've got that information, we should be registering and giving that to the inspectorate because he then has to consider it. Yeah. And we have the opportunity as interested parties to question him on why he's ignoring it. Yeah. And if it breaches an EU limit, I would have thought we've got quite a strong case. And if you wanted to include information regarding rat running on um, the number of HGVs that are going through the village at the moment, and Ken wanted to organise a survey of that through the village, I'm sure that he would welcome it, volunteers to come and man that um, when you did it, and it might be useful yeah. to do, might not it? Yep. Ahead well, of the last time I had one volunteer for an hour, so you know the rest of the time <laughs> I sat there on my own. But, you know, it was interesting. Yeah. Well, can so, I suggest you leave a piece of paper out tonight, and people who might be willing to assist with that could write their names on after this meeting yep. while you've got a captive audience. Okay, that'd be great because any data like that, it's got to help, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's got to yeah. strengthen absolutely. the case. It's got to make people aware of um, the concerns. 800 good souls, 825 plus children, <coughs> have of regarding traffic through the village and what concerns there will be when this road is built. <coughs> but don't be obvious, otherwise they'll get on their CVs yeah. and they'll say, as a checking Hilton, yeah. avoid it. Yes. So well, camouflage they, they didn't actually camouflage yeah. Yeah. They didn't actually do that the last time. They just stopped their lorries and asked me what I was doing. That was, you know, just... <laughs> Well, I asked somebody what he was doing at quarter to seven um, with his lorry with um, roof joists and etc. on it from St. Ives. And I said, did you know there was a curfew? And he said, so what? And then an expletive. 
Uh, that's uh, Dave Smith's from up on the uh, St Ives estate, isn't yeah. it? Mr yeah. Chairman, people come and sit in my little front room and look across the crossroads, right? And they can see every vehicle that goes up and down. And if you wish to use that as a viewing point, fine. The thing is, John, the thing is, John last time I did it, I took every registration number, I took every company name off every vehicle. So what I did, I put the camper right up to the edge of the road, and I can see both ways from the camper. <laughs> and uh, you know, just sat there. It was quite nice because I was only five foot two. So that uh, surveillance on the Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so that could be a strand. Yeah, I'm getting a bit away. That we can feed that information into. But of course, uh, what we what we would like to encourage you, as we said at the time of the main consultation, <coughs> we the meeting is that when this window opens, that as many people as possible register and write in, take the time to write in. And we will, as suggested, um, ask the highways what level of response they've had from Hilton before and what the themes were and what they've given, if anything, on the scheme. Going back to their point of they've reconsulted after 800 comments, what have they done? What have they tweaked? What have they done to improve? And what will they do? How long a period will they allow for additional comments to come in? Rachel. Is there some sort of just on the tap of making it more bus? Um, you know, when that point comes with submissions to the highways agency, I don't know if many people would support maybe all the letters from Hilton residents being delivered, hand delivered by a delegation to the highways agency. Mm -hmm. With maybe some of the local press or we can get the local news involved. So that we can actually make more of a statement with the strength of the human village. Yeah. What was the question? So the question was when uh, this next uh, window is open. Would it be quite a good idea to collect the letters from Hilton and go with a delegation and deliver them to highways <coughs> to raise publicity or raise awareness of the plight of Hilton or the um, it concerns people in Hilton have and the, how they feel that they haven't been addressed so far um, and just raising the profile, making Hilton um, the focal point. On the map. Yeah. There must be an election coming up soon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have yeah. you looked at yeah. the highways Bridget coming Warner. here? And then we could, yeah. when they come here to meet the parish council, we could give them that enormous sack. Yeah, we could do it, do it that way. Um, but we can't do it until we know what they are proposing. And uh, we can imagine they're probably going to do their meeting with you. Before the next proposal? Yeah. Don't know. Uh, you know. Do Don't know. Mm. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Given that the scheme wasn't at a stage that you might consider being as finalised when the consultation period was closed, so how can you comment on something? Um, we'll have to wait and see how mm. that comes out for the next time. Mm -hmm. Richard. We've heard um, our MP's views on the 1040. We know, I think, what his views are on the A14. Certainly if my response from him was that, uh, so what, it's going through and uh, there's nothing you could do. Yes. What's his response to the parish council? Well, I read out what his uh, response to us was so far. But that we all pursued. That was the 1040. Um, what was his response from the A14? He was very sympathetic to Hilton's position. You want to say that. <laughs> we also made it clear that the current scheme, as it stands, was, in his opinion, best for everybody. He was obviously looking north of the road. A lot more people live there, and he's a politician. Yeah. Um, that's why I think, as a village, if we're going to use our elected representatives, 
we should try and do it in a way that they can actually afford to help us. And uh, things like the 1040 is a good example. Um, if we are looking for more mitigation, and that can be done uh, without any political cost to them, then I think we will have their support. That's, that's a private summarization, but that's, uh, I was in the meeting with them, I think it's pretty much the flavour of it. We, we pushed for two things. One was an HGB ban, um, and one was increased funding, and both of which he was supportive of. But we didn't uh, try to right, just a couple of So, two things. One was the funding, increased funding, which he was sympathetic towards, and the HGB <coughs> ban through Hilton, again, which he was sympathetic towards. I think if you try and get him to support the road being cancelled or going somewhere else, <laughs> you really are pushing against a, uh, a brick wall, so you have to sort of, if you want his support, we have to come up with things that he can do without losing his physical career or his neck out too far. Take, taking that into account, then, yeah. yeah. in terms of mitigation, it's the most important thing. I, I mean, a number of things I've heard today suggest that due process isn't quite being taken yeah. and that we haven't had the noise assessment. There's been a problem with that. How do we play the process game to make sure that we are properly heard at the right time? Well, yeah, I think you put your finger on one important part, and that is the environmental impact study, which is a central plank to, should be used to design the road by. Uh, it's not yet yeah. available, but it should be before the next consultation phase. So um, we will be pushing to get hold of a copy of that, and we'll make it available when we, if we get it, or it might be uh, available to you from other sources. But that is going to give us something, if it's not in our favour, to challenge. So it's worth, uh, I think, everybody keeping an eye out for that. You can register highways as um, to have notifications come through to you about updates on the A14 as part of their general traffic management scheme. So uh, this, that isn't registering as an interested party on this scheme, it's just registering to have email advice to you when they announce whatever the next stage is on the A14. Um, given the response we had from Highways Agency, we will be taking the comments from the meeting and going to Highways with those, and we will take them up on their offer to come and talk to us. We will ask them about what they've done uh, with the responses so far. We'll ask them where the environmental study is, what they're doing about sound. We'll ask them about what they're doing about traffic modelling um, through the village. Question. Yes. Um, you talked about baseline for noise. Mm -hmm. Do we have baseline for acoustics? No, well, it isn't the noise. So noise. Um, do we have it for pollution and light? Just wondering, I don't know, do you mean you think if they've got to meet EU legislation, again it's like unless you've got it to measure from, is it worth I, mean, I don't know how much the surveys are, but you just think is it worth having that in place to then argue that case? Because you've got your funding like say for screening and then you've got your sound attenuation, but you know that there's those people in the vision might have you know, terrible allergies and such like, and additional pollution might not help them. So you've got the baseline survey where it sits today on, on those other categories that everyone's concerned around. Yeah, and we will ask one ways to come and do that yeah. as part of their consultation yeah. and their planning and see what the response is. Can they ask for someone's garden? That is is it? Yeah. yeah, they were asking for people's gardens that they could do this from, so it is in their mind. Oh, uh, 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 the, I think somebody mentioned that there was some environmental um, data taken as part of a survey by the HCV group, who's a, a set of villages mainly north of the A14. They're, more, they're worried about the rat running they're going to get through Erith and, and that road there. But they encompassed Hilton as part of that, and the parish council contributed towards that survey. Um, as somebody said, one of the machines didn't work properly. They had, they'd had to come back and take it. But there is some data. I'm not sure it's official baseline data, but there were particular data. There was a vibration sensor in somebody's house as well, right near the roads. So they were measuring the vibration coming through the road. So we do have some data. That group's incredibly active. Um, they've, they've got a very good set of uh, representatives of parish councils north of the um, uh, of the A14. I think it'd be really useful if we could send a representative to those meetings 
uh, as they've got a good good organisation. They've got some uh, some very bright people on it as well. So can I make a plea that that happens? You have a job back then. Brilliant. Excellent. Do you know when the next meeting? At yeah, they just had it. it was supposed to be tomorrow, but it's just been postponed. I think until next week. Is it, Margaret? Second of October. Oh, I think. That, yeah. uh, I'll have to yeah. let you know for sure. Thank you. But picking up on the, the bonding and the, the sound barriers that you know we are on the continent, so they, you know, they've, they've got very different approaches. To their, to their, to their <laughs> yes. Um, rather than that's how we're going to see and change it to their proposal, do you think we should actually say this is what we want? I do know that when the last uh, when the DA14 was in front of us before, that those comments were made on highways about. That when you go on the continent, you have bits of doing this. And the response was, um, it doesn't work. It's been destroyed. Just a quick question. I, I put out of the report we got, which is a very comprehensive report, the consultant actually gives models, brands, and almost costs of the, uh, it's, a, it's like a, a, a twin skinned, either plastic or wooden screening, which is used. And it's well respected, and there's lots of data and statistics about it. Um, I certainly put that in my letter to the highways agency. It's one of the things that they boilerplate sort of acknowledged in there. Um, so I think we, we ought to bring the argument. If they say it doesn't work, and we've got an expert that says it does work, then we ought to yeah. get into, into into that point because it has been proved to be very effective. It's small cost in 1.5 billion, isn't it? It is, yeah. And the, you know, we understand why the road is there. It's for the economic growth of the country. But... If that's at the expense, you know, they should actually be setting out to make an exemplary project. That's what we need to encourage them to do. Yeah. Yeah. And it was sadly that the last time it was rather dealt with as it's no more effective than a band. Can I just add train. a little bit to that? Yes. Jacob's engineers, what they said was that, um, yes, uh, screens will make a difference to people living close by, but at uh, half a mile away. That you still get a lot of low frequency sound going up into the air and unaffected, unaffected by the screens. So, in their opinion, it was not going to help us. Uh, but that's the and it'll be a case of one expert. It is, but that's a conflict. Expert. The expert we pay yeah. for here, six, six, yeah. the big parish council paid about six thousand pounds for the survey to be done. He was very specific at, at all the distances, and uh, and that that will be a difference. Their expert will say, well, the person that parish council employed would say it will. And that was based on the previous scheme, yes. Peter, when we were it's actually building the road, at, or they were proposing to build the road at the existing grade, now they're lifting it two and metres, and, it's slightly and that will have away. a significant yeah. impact on yeah. the noise. Well, so I think it's legitimate to use that, Peter, oh, because will. it's, you know, they say, well, it's not, well, actually, you, you said, actually, that's, that's a, a, a worst case scenario. Uh, the best case scenario, should I say. Yeah. So I think it's good to hear. But we will, we will certainly make those comments to highways. Um, I'll just give you a flavour of what they said last time. Really? Um, but we will, because it's all points we need to raise. Can I raise one which um, we've been trying to get an answer to, but they keep on referring back to the historical base for this scheme, which is sort of 10, 12 years back. We know that quite a lot of uh, new developments are being proposed, including Monstone, but we cannot get any indication as to how much they've factored in the additional traffic those developments will have on local roads, and particularly coming down the beach and Fortin. So that would be a point you would like to have raised? Yes. I am happy you will.
you know, restrictions in terms of either a speed limit or um, chicanes or anything else that's going to make it less pleasant for people to park for you. Well, I believe, Ken, I'm going to come back to you, Ken, that as Hat, you're um, looking to ask for a 20 mile an hour speed limit in the village? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Throughout the village? Yeah. Including along here? Yes. Yeah. So that is something that's going forward on that. Um, the traffic calming measures um, are popular in some quarters and popular with, and not so popular with other quarters within the village. Um, so that would be a more difficult one to get through. You don't have to penalise yourself to the planning inspector. Sorry, you don't have to penalise your spots to either mitigation or stocking. You can do both. Yeah. You don't have to give up. Yeah. You might get a reply from the highway saying that you should go to local county council. But it needs to be. There's no point in doing it. It needs to be raised across the board. Just to, just to Mark's point, though, I don't think. That, I mean, it may be correct that we can't fundamentally change the rules, but I think a very important mitigation would be that if the currently <coughs> was actually moved further north, I mean, you know, even you know a couple of hundred metres will make a big difference to us. Mm. So, you know, I, to my mind, that you know, you've got one question about the route and whether it should be. Uh, or, or I suppose whether the road should be built at all, that's one question, but I think the second one for us is a mitigation factor. That actually, the route does not need to be as close as it currently is to the village. And they could move it, well I think they could move it more without adversely affecting other communities, which I think is... That was, um, that was raised during the previous round, 3.10, and um, you come to things like, um, uh, I would think, if you moved it a bit further north, they have to go over the Buckton landfill site. Which means they then have to take ownership of anything in there in terms of toxins, you know, uh, health and safety issues, which they don't want to do to get around, but bring themselves out. So that's a cost issue for them. Well, it, it is a cost issue. It's not saying it's a different, but it's a drive for them. Did you get that? Yeah. <laughs> because there was. <laughs> Yes, because this opportunity you'll have to put your comments in, your comments will be going to the planning inspectorate. Is, I'm correct. Can you just, it, just to elaborate on what was just said then, Peter? Uh, and I'll add a little bit to it, if I may. That when the original proposals for the A14 Southern Bypass were published, and there was a folder, a flyer around there, the route uh, was further north of Hilton, it went north of Wood Green Animal Shelter and the Equine Centre, and then down and round. And when it, the new consultation came through, um, how many of years ago, they had straightened that route. And that straightening of the route was in part the Buck, Buckton Landfill? Buckton Landfill. And high, um, I know because we spoke to highways at length on this, um, they didn't want to build over Buckton Landfill because they didn't know what they'd find underneath it. So when they piled into it, was there toxic waste under there? Were there things that might leach into the countryside that they didn't want to do? And I think there's an old landfill up near Connington yes. somewhere. Yes. And they wanted to avoid that. And that made the route adopt the line that, they, that it's currently set on. Um, which is a shame because I felt originally that when it was north of Wood Green and above the equine, you've got that hill up to Wood Green, which would have mitigated yeah, quite a lot of the noise. Yeah. Originally, and that's why right. it would have been behind the hill. Yes. And now it's not. Yeah. But also, every bend that they take out of it is saving them millions. Mm -hmm. Yes. 22 miles at 1.5 billion. Yeah, every bend they take out and straighten up is saving a million billion. At the previous um, exhibition at the uh, the um, race course, I asked the question about the landfill, and somebody there admitted actually it was cost. It's not a technical issue. There's lots of examples of landfills being 
having roads driven over them. It's just it's, it's a cheaper route, as you said. So it's quite expensive to do all the piling and everything else that needs to go over a landfill, but it's quite feasible. And it's the same argument for not doing it north of the A14 because it's much more fen land than the cost of building the road on that sort of material would be a much more expensive than south of the A14. So but that was their primary reason for refusing that route. Cost, and I suggested to them at the last consultation, why didn't they bring it back online you know, a third earlier? And that would have saved them half a bit. You know, they take the junction out at Spittles, that's the issue, isn't it? That's, yeah. that's not the issue here. No, but um, this seems to be the solution, or the proposed solution. So, um, it's up to us to ask the inspector of why they're not doing it. Thank you. Ultimately, they've got the responsibility of making the decision. It's not the highway thing. There seems to be, um, from the paper that's been due, the nature of the routes, you know, in every sort of way, that's because of the investigation, but when the, the previous um, planning inspector did their thing. Call it the open house in um, 2009 or There was a feeling amongst the villagers, and certainly I know we've offered them perhaps and were really poor perhaps, so they were going to challenge hard on that they hadn't demonstrated the root of value for money or justified them on a whole range of issues. But um, I'm getting the feeling that. Well, they came out in the next round of consultation after the challenge with the six routes that they had looked at and had looked at the value and the cost and the benefit of those six routes, and that's where they're based. Yeah, it was a while ago. They've been doing that. Yes. You know, they keep saying this is the one. Yes. Has anybody really sort of challenged on the show? As opposed to, for example, just the widening on its current. Current, um, mm. line, I think you know, things like that, <coughs> or yeah. other issues such as you know um, banning lorry motor taking, <coughs> um, other sort of minor improvements you know, on the on the A14. Yeah. Nobody's really because that was going to be the crux of the challenge in the inspectorate um, review, uh, and, and then it got cancelled. Um, so we never got that, and now it's come back. And I know they've changed the law. And so all these processes are truncated and we don't get so long to input. They still um, have a legal responsibility to demonstrate produce of public funds. Yeah. And uh, they've been very careful not to release information that would allow that to be challenged at this point. Just, I mean, just going up on a complete flyer, it did occur to me a while ago in terms of legal challenges. You know, is it actually lawful that they've, they've commissioned an inspector's review on the project? then cancelled it, changed the law, and then proceeded with the same project under a different set of planning processes. Um, and I did actually write to Ivan Collier at Brampton about that some time ago, but never got a response, saying, you know, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but no. would it be worth taking advice on, is the whole consultation process lawful or that, or should they actually, in some way, be forced to continue with under the previous regime, because they started, because it is probably the same project. And yet they killed it off and said, oh, now we've got a new project under the new law, which favours them tremendously because the law's been skewed in paper. We'll bring that up with highways when we meet them. It, it, it might be worth the part of the rampant and all the people that are not going to put them in the rampant. No, absolutely. You know, because if, if you could actually, like, like the previous challenge by Bob and the challenge, not the whole person of the rampant, you could really put the skids on the if you could establish that. I think, I think so it would have to be, we, we would have to do a legal challenge. I mean, I've gone at this with the Secretary of State, and they're, and they're not having any of it where the consultation is to be lodged. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you have to go to the law, so, something that you would make a fashion for. Yeah. So it's very expensive. It would, yeah, yeah. but they did it before. Yeah. But it still doesn't stop us making a point to the inspector and asking those questions. Yeah. And you've got that down, Brad? Did you hear? They yeah. Have yeah. 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 Fine. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've, is it up or something? Yeah. Oh, is it up or something? Oh, yeah, it's fine. Right. She's nice. Actually. I do apologise. I was looking at the clock thinking, 9 o'clock, everybody would be wanting to go home. But we've got another 25 minutes to go. John. Um, I don't know whether other people remember, but there was a consultation exercise on the route 
from beneath the roof in the roof back in 2012. And the documents are on a summary, you know, they're 40 or 50 pages long. But they do contain a lot of information about, in, in, in a lot of information in general terms, about the different routes and some options, some of the things that were raised in 2009 and 10. That was a book that they put out at the time of the, when they came here, wasn't it? Yeah, and yeah. if you look at those, which are actually addressed, and there, there's a link in that green book that they were given in the exhibition. It will give you some indication of what the economics and what the later views were of the, in favour of the, the different options and why this particular route was rechosen. And um, that might give you something to go on there. Yeah. Um, it's quite a, quite a long, quite a long term document. But there's a lot of information there. Thank you, John. Any other comments on this end of the room at the moment? Mm -hmm. Anybody around me or down this end of the room, like to say? Right. Just a quick one on the, the traffic that I think we'll, we'll be coming through, how or is that we do have some official stats for the speed of traffic going through the village, which is probably three or four years old now, <coughs> which is a, a 7 by 24 survey carried out by the highways agency and police, so it is very official. Um, that showed that over 50% of all the traffic heading south over a seven day period was exceeding the ACPO speed limit. We have a hugely speedy problem there. Uh, that means that over 50% of all the vehicles were doing over 35. That also measured, not HCVs, it measured uh, vehicles over six metres long. And likewise, uh, those vehicles, something like 30% of those vehicles were shown to be speeding. So we have some good data, I think, to reinforce the, the, the mitigation we need to have for traffic, not just HCVs, but cars as well. And speed watch. What about <coughs> speed watch? There are statistics with them. That give guidelines we have, we've got, we've got lots and lots of speed and it's yeah. just outrageous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the speed's there. And, and also the interesting thing about that survey was it not only um, measured the number of vehicles speeding, it actually measured all of their speeds. Um, and there was vehicles doing between 70, 60 at, sorry, 70 and 80 miles an hour were recorded on that, uh, that device <laughs> uh, going through the village. So um, we have some, some, some good data we can use. Yeah, I, I, I suppose my, my only concern is that what, why should we think that the term 40 should be some kind of quid pro quo? We don't. We, we, we have no. We, you know, we don't. We, we don't. We don't have any car, We don't have a hand to play in this. Why should they care about the B1040? Well, it's not like we're saying, yeah, we'll let you have your A14 if you start the B1040 or anything. Like that. I don't see how. I struggle to see how the two they, are, they are. No, they're such. And it's just a hope, if you like, that they will look on it and acknowledge that it is a loser, as they announced at the Methodist chapter, mm -hmm. and try and do some steps to improve what might, what traffic might be coming through the village and might not be. Peter, can I, can I just elaborate on a bit on that? Oh, Helen's brother is a consultant that does a lot of this sort of type of work. Um, he works a lot for Hansons with the gravel pits and stuff, and he does a lot on a lot of legal work. And I passed this by him the other day when I was speaking to him, and I said, you know, what, what would your suggestion be? And he said, if you give up, you'll fall into their hands. He said, all they do, he said, they bully boy everybody, and they will keep doing little things, like putting diggers in fields, and then they, if you don't respond to those little things, then the big things all of a sudden don't become a problem. And I take the point out, but if we just let everything just wash over the top of their head and then we have another meeting when everything's built we'll be just you know we'll be all kicking ourselves for just sitting down and doing nothing exactly. i think we've yeah. got to make hilton become an important problem to the highways agency yeah. we've got to make the b1040 <coughs> a big problem to them because if we want anything for this village out of this a14 We've got to bloody fight for it because they're not going to do it for well, us. I agree. We have got to do it ourselves. The the, the issue the, the, they're not related issues. You, you know, I, uh, unless you know, unless we have some projection on what's going to happen on the B1040, why should they even care about that in relation to the A14? Okay, no so so that's fine, Ken. You know, and I, you're right. You know, don't roll over. You, you know, people should should people have been rolling over on these issues for donkey's years. 
So what are you saying then? You're proposing some kind of campaign of direct action? Absolutely, yeah. Right, okay then. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. So what's happening? Well, I'm going to sit down and sort that out. Oh, uh, Richard, Richard's got a question for you. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, they, they, are, they are linked, and the HA is linked by taking uh, the junction out. The A14. So I think they're very linked. I think as a direct consequence of the new A14, we will get more heavy goods vehicles, certainly during the construction phase, yeah. and I'm sure afterwards, and we will have the legacy of rat running. So I think those are, you can directly relate those to the A14. All of you took the junction out because of cost, which it could have been. And yeah. of course, a lady who's here tonight pointed out. But yeah, except your point. There was an accident on the. 1040 the other day, about two weeks ago, was it? Mm. Where uh, somebody was pulling out of one of the roads and was hit by an HGV? Church End. Church End. Church End. And mm. I don't know about you, but I got a call from somebody who was trying to catch a bus um, saying she's watched the bus for 15 minutes and it's not moved an inch because everything just collapsed. And um, obviously, if the HGV wasn't going through the village, it wouldn't have um, happened. Um, possibly. In favour of the HGV driver, because I did go down there and speak to the police. It wasn't his fault. It was the fault of the vehicle that was pulling out of yeah, church. If there were no, no HGVs through the village. They might have hit him on the car, though, it didn't even work. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel. Uh, then. I don't know the answer. Yes, no, it's it's because correct. of the getting the bridge over the new A14. Yeah. They have straightened that, but they are proposing to straighten out the road so that you can drive straight drive yeah. up yeah. and over. That's going to be it's about three quarters of a mile. At least at the moment, there's a 30 bend from one minute. Yeah. But if that's straight from St. Ives all the way to head down to Hilton, that is going to encourage people to wrap down. Yeah. No, give it to you some uh, keep it Exactly. Yeah. No, we're talking Eagle about the Eagle Canadian. Eagle. What's going to happen about the low road? Yes. Yeah. That's not off our radar to um, talk to highways now. Because we're going to spend more road. Yeah. Are they going to take that? Um, no. Are, Are they going to take that? Sorry. They should come now by the chicken farm. Mm -hmm. uh, no. no, no, no. Don't, it's not on the plan to take that, I don't think. No, no, we should look at your friendship with that. Yeah, okay. um, I agree with Alan I agree with Alan's view that you should concentrate, when the time comes, on the battles you can fight, noise, pollution. Could you just remind us why it's raised as opposed to going down? I just, it's lost uh, in the mist of time because it occurs to me that they're going across land full of gravel. They'll be taking that out and going down. So why that, you know, they've got gravel going out for free from farmers who may not get paid for it because they've got a CPO for roads. Yeah. Good eat, we've got all this free gravel, dig that out. Um, so why does it need to be? Why has we got to go back up again? Can somebody remind us? Is it not flood the part, if you look at the, there is an environmental agency um, map which indicates a big swathe of blue down the left hand side of the on the one in a hundred year risk. Uh, yeah. um, somebody gave a very, one of the team gave a very good answer to somebody about raising the road during the week. Was it you, Anne? Um, well, it was based on what Kieran, I think, had worked out. That if you look at the the elevation of the road from here all the way up to Rumpton, where it connects to the A1, <coughs> uh, if you look at the the various contours and the bits of hill we're taking away in order to reduce the uh, ups and downs, let's say, of the new route, the quantity or the volume of soil that's coming out to smooth that uh, the road surface is equivalent to the height by which it's being raised in other places. So it's... Yeah, just to, just to add to that. Thanks, If you think of the, the minimum height, uh, or the minimum depth, they need to cut cutting on the 11 inch to get the road underneath, that spoil of soil, this looks like it's equivalent to what they've pushed out back towards Hilton. Mm -hmm. 
in order to raise a road to get it up at the right height so they can do the minimum depth underneath the road. Now that's a theory, but it's that. That, is, that would be accurate. It's called, it's called mass fall. So they build the road so there's, there's zero spoil going off site. Yeah. But if we go for much raised bonds, then they'll have to drop the road because they'll need to spoil the bonds. That's right. I, I quizzed Jacobs at the meeting in the, in the Methodist Church. They uh, didn't answer much, did they? But they, they quizzed them very much on that. They kept coming back in adamant that it was drainage. Uh, and they're drainage experts. They, they kept saying, my experts tell us that it has to be that high because of the drainage. Mm. Um, and I think that was, the, that was the line they were sticking to. Um, and I said, well, you know, we don't need extra drainage on the A14 as it is at the moment, which is much lower. And he said, well, that's at a different location. It's got a, a much b better main drain to connect to and all the usual sort of flannel they're giving. But their, their, their official argument was drainage. It needs to be that high to give the fall to get the drainage and the water off. So are they saying the original scheme was flawed? Previous scheme was a grade. Exactly. <laughs> that is one issue that is Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. But Snuggie's talked about the flooding issue so far, I don't think. Or oh, the potential of it. There's a gentleman in the village who knows about these things and, and he assures me it shouldn't be an issue. But it's, it's hard to see how if you put in a six lane highway and you lose that much soak away mm. across that. Like, I mean, I, when was it, 10, 12 years ago when we had the flooding at the crossroads yeah. and um, um, crossroads and yeah, all, that, all that more, were, were, were flooded, which um, apparently never happened. It never happened. It never happened. In living memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember getting all, all betty at her house up to my knees in water and sewage in the house that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I'll come and help you. Now. But, but, uh, but it is, has that issue been raised raised at all? I can't. I can't remember off the top of my head. I mean, they said it was one in a hundred year event. We have, we have talked about, I'm sure we've talked about it being raised with highways. I just can't remember what their response is. I'm coming to John in a moment. It was about drainage. Yeah. It was about drainage, yeah. Mm. Okay. John. The last time around, 2009-2010, when we discussed, I know that I've overheard the discussion correctly about the height of the road and so on. The last time around, one of the things that was said to us was that the, the height of the, the main A14 over the floodplain is dictated essentially by environmental agency policies on how high the bridge needs to be over the, um, over the, over the, the various waterways. So that uh, the standards now are much for a much higher bridge over the over the waterways than was the case when the existing A14 was built. Right. Whether that's accurate or not, I don't know. But that I think was the sort of explanation we had at the time. Um, and, the and I suspect that if that is the case, then they will build to a minimum height allowed by environmental yeah. regulation. But again, it's one of those things that can be proved. And it is one of the things I'd forgotten about the height of the road. Is one of the things that. Um, when this window was open was something that we were going to talk to the plan inspector, put our views across about why is it ought to be, especially at 2.82 metres, I think is the highest point I've seen on that drawing, um, which will be an interesting view as you go along Gravely Way, this thing in the field. Join me again, again. Um, the other thing is, um, borrow pits. Yes. And the construction compounds. Yes. Um, it's just worth asking the question. Presumably they're temporary for the purposes of the road. And once the road's done, they'll get closed up and it goes and the restoration is back to agricultural land and that the compounds become back to what they were before. Otherwise, you could see those potentially being developed for mm -hmm. a another. Patrick is my expert on borrowing. Well, the, the compounds obviously will disappear when the road is built. And has been completed. As far as the borrow pit is concerned, it's my understanding that the county council had to give planning permission for the contractor to use that to extract material. Mm -hmm. Unless they condition the consent to say you may only use it during construction, mm -hmm. it's my understanding it could continue uh, for as long as whoever wants to yeah. use it afterwards. And then my point about that one is, it's invariably you look at gravel pits that have stopped being used, they still have to have a restoration plan as to what would happen with it. So it's question that whether that restoration plan goes back. Because a lot of gravel pits will go to like a nature reserve yeah. or whatever. 
but equally they could be used for, I don't know, waste of energy or recycling, and actually landfill I don't like now, but there's all of those factors, it's just worth understanding now as to what those conditions might be, and just voicing our view that we don't want additional traffic because of that. Yeah, that's a good point. point. So and we will put that in because, yes, yeah. what are they going to do with the road here? When the road's constructed. Yeah. It's going to be a nice little loop thing when you get the kids to get a nice little cycle route up to it and they can go and bike around it. Marvellous. You know. Swimming. Swimming. In the diesel polluted waters. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm yeah, no, 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 I do know what you're saying. It is. They are going to be big pits by the looks of the plan. So, what is the intention what's, with Yeah, them? what's the restoration plan? That you're yeah. Is there, is there a bit of a gap between us sort of asking these questions and thinking, actually, what can we reasonably be saying we expect to happen and looking more around like publicity and making those statements as a group of concerned villagers um, and coming out maybe a bit stronger, so around all sorts of things, um, so not just the parish council, thinking actually how can we generate a bit of momentum because I genuinely think that on balance you've nothing to lose but actually there is every chance that that visibility could go in our favour because people somehow weigh it up even though they have to follow due process I think there is probably a good chance that being very visible and you talk about like showing that we care and, and actually picking up on everything I think over time could support how people see and um, deal with what we're asking for. Obviously, I support that statement fully. I'm not sure where we'd go with that, no, but maybe exactly, needs but us thinking, time. you know, I know, maybe there's people who are good on social media and tweeting and, you know, but as cumulative, what could we do more to give that momentum? I think there's something in that. I mean, just the fact we're having this exhibition in this meeting may have provoked that response from main check, although we're not going to go quietly. Um, yeah. The more we can do, the better. Mm. Yeah. And they was... they didn't actually respond until I sent them a flyer. Yeah. Once they got a flyer, they knew that it was happening, and then they responded. So they but it. as um, you could send them one every week, whether or not having it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, in the Hunt, the article in the Hunts Post was uh, commented that it's actually the first, uh, pa you know, parish council villager-led exhibition. All the others that have been on have been run by highway. I think that, not strictly true, because we did um, run our meeting in the Metal Shop before. But that was using their own stuff. But, that was using their stuff. but this is the first one, so it's really, really good, the response we've had, thank you, um, that has been led by the village. Um, and I think that's, were they perhaps, um, the highways agency have perhaps woken up to that fact, that it is um, a village. Led. Has anybody had contact with Radio Cambridgeshire, and, uh, the television companies? Um, you see all these things at Histon and out in Harston and things like that where they've had all these problems. And they come and video, whatever the word is, <coughs> and put it on TV. I don't think we have a good problem. No, it's... Uh, okay. so they've got a roast of things at West, don't they? Exactly. You could ask them to come here for a day and sit on the road. Not on the road, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes, sit on the road, yes. Um, and if they, could, if they could come for a whole day, starting with the 7 o'clock, was it 7 o'clock when the radio came to church, really gets going, and then at 9 o'clock as well, and and have a feature of the of the day. That, that yeah, and certainly that's what... Um, Mark is pushing for Mark is in the working group. It's a bit more um, media savvy, yeah. something social networking. I, I agree with the Senate. I think we should have some sort of Facebook page and, and tweet. All that takes a lot of um, true effort. I think the real thing won't really <coughs> spend all day. I think they probably won't have any impact. There is, um, there's an easier way if you want to hit the mainstream, certainly the local media. And the, the, way, the way to approach it is with small, simple stories. If you make it easy, because the local, the local press and even the local TV doesn't have the resources it once had. So just, just while I've been sitting here and you've been talking about that, we could, for example, get hold of a DB meter, stand a mile from the road when there's a southerly wind, 
measure what, what how many decibels we get and say noise levels in Hilton will exceed EU guidelines based on this blah blah blah, say Hilton residents, and we could bang one of them out a week. We could think of a new one every single week. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's three paragraphs, a couple of quotes, you know, a silly photograph and bullshit. It's easy as that. Right. But, but the trouble is, if you get into, if you start, if you send them a treatise, if, you, you know, if, if we start to confuse the issues, you know, and, and start banging on you know, about 1040 this and noise and flooding and blah, blah, blah. You know, just, if you keep it really simple, just little nuggety bits, just one at a time. Because, you know, I, I know how these people work. Because I work with them, so. That can be done Sounds now. like we one, one, one tier, <laughs> 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 done one. We've been talking to take that idea forward. Okay, right. That's fine. Because you know. But, but you know, people people need to come up with the ideas. You know, you know, I, I can I can toss a press release out in twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. you know, did one on this the other night. You know, so, so so that's not difficult. But it, it has to be very simple, very focused. And if you keep hitting them, and if, and if it's interesting, and compelling, and it's you know, a simple message, they're des the the desperate for content. When did you last see a local newspaper with? Any notion of an investigative story or anything else like that. It's, it's, all, it's all recycled press releases. You know, they run the hand scanner up them or even just cut and paste these things, and, and that's it. So, it so there's an avenue there. I think it was Ken who said, it might have been Ken or another gentleman there, who said about using the, about them using bully boy tactics and uh, trying to. Um, aggravate by things like having the digger in that field at the moment doing the archaeology research maybe that's the kind of thing that could be highlighted so that it it shows that they are using tactics which aren't um you know sort of public friendly they are it, it would show the kind of tactics that the yeah. uh highways <coughs> agency may be using well it's, it's yeah it's as simple as you know take 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 the picture of the diggers, Hilton residents have expressed concern, yeah. blah blah blah, something yeah. Parish Council says this, yeah. da da da, yeah. send it to the newspaper and then they will then ring someone from the highways or whatever else to get their comment. They will probably, probably, they will probably get no response, but what it does buy is a few free yes. column inches. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, you, know, you just have to be agitated in, in, in that way, just keep rattling the page. Is there a way then from using the fact that we're actually we're all here and there is that momentum and there is that energy of using that idea and thinking so from today, you know, if you're not careful that all dissipates and life gets busy, a bit like sort of Ken with his bit of paper signing up volunteers, some way that we can use this momentum and say, right, who might want to be interested and get together and be a point for collecting ideas and using absolutely all your expertise to keep that going. Yeah, it's just simple. You know, it, it, as many ideas as, as there, there are, it's easy to do. I mean, people, there's nothing to stop any of us jotting down a, f a few paragraphs. You know, it's the, 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 the important thing is, is to be concise and stay on message, whatever it is you pick on, be, be it noise or, or anything else. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up now, ladies and gentlemen. Well, thank you again for coming. Now I've got the time right. Um, we will, um, as the highways agency have asked us to, feed back to them the points that we've had brought to our attention during the exhibition period and from this evening. We will put that letter on our on the parish council's website when it's sent. Um, we will look to take them up on their invitation to talk to the parish council. Talk with you, Joe. Talk with you, he says. And a few of your parish councillors. And we will let you know what they have to say. We will put a flyer out when to every house in the village when that window opens for you to register as an interested party. And we will um, bring up some of the points that was raised that were raised this evening, or was, were, um, to say these were the areas that were discussed. You might like to write mentioning some of these areas. Okay. Um, and we will ask the Highways Agency, whether or not they'll agree to it, to come to the village again and put on a display of what 
the final route is. Because I haven't said to us that they will do that at all, but we will ask them to come and do so. Because, shall I mention it again? The guys from the Methodist Church said, Hilton no, are one of the big losers. So we will ask them to come and display their wares. Will you also put the resume <coughs> from tonight onto the blackboards, onto the notice boards, um, yeah. as yeah. well as the uh, website? Yeah, <coughs> we can put that out. Uh, and if any of your neighbours weren't able to be here, I'll be posting the video up, so if you want to come and see what was said that weren't able to make it. You know, that this has been constructed tonight by the amount of people and what's been said. We need another meeting mm. organised so that people can come and listen to what's been said by the highways agency and your good self. Yeah, so fine. We can all come back yeah. again oh, and do it. Yeah. 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 After we remember the highways agency. Yeah. 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 An another village meeting and then, with our good friend there, he may be able to organise some publicity. For that, If we could have put three paragraphs about this evening and saying we met and looked at how it might look, because they're really striking those photos. Before everybody moves, I know that Lisa suggested that we had some photographs of people here tonight. Have anybody taken any photographs? Would anybody object to any photographs being taken so that we could give perhaps a representative view of the great gathering that we've had it this evening? Have one of these devices. I'm also going to put up on, on the table. There's a list here. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, really? yeah. So if you want to volunteer to help Ken doing that, oh, yeah. there's a notice here to sign up to. And what do you think? Email. Email. And if you want to, if you want a direct email from us as it can we get through to highways. Please see Graham and give him your email address, and then we'll make sure that that goes out the first point call. But we will do yeah. the other things that have been suggested, like having another meeting. Was in the one. Have you taken his photo? Have you taken his photo? One over there. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.